What's up YouTube? This is P-I-Z-Z-S-E-N here, and man, it has been a very long time since I've last seen you guys. With the exception of that update video that I shot a couple of days ago, but aside from that, it has been a very, very long time since I've last done a proper video. And I'm very excited to be making you guys a video today. I have a bit of solitary time today, which is something that's getting more and more rare, as it would seem. So, uh, yeah, I'm taking this opportunity and running with it, and I've got a Zippo video for you guys today in case you haven't noticed. What we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about the Zippo Candle Lighter. Yes, this is actually a long time coming. I've actually put off buying this for a few years now. And just this past week, I was at the mall actually to bring my computer in to get fixed. And they had a Yankee Candle at that mall. And I went in and bought this candle lighter because I wanted the one specifically from Yankee Candle because it's, well, it's just different. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump into this video. So here we have the candle lighter. This is by no means a new product or a new concept from Zippo. This has been out for quite a few years now. There's several videos on these on YouTube, but uh, I just wanted to come on and give you guys my video. Taking a look at the front of the lighter, this switch is what you're gonna push to get your flame going, as you can see. Very, very simple concept. We have here the Yankee Candle branding. That's not gonna be always there, depending on whether or not you get yours at Yankee Candle. Here we have a Zippo logo, because this is a Zippo product. And up here, you've got this nice metal nozzle where your flame will come out. And that, I guess, is just a little bit of exhaust so that way some oxygen can get in and uh, keep the fire going. Now on the bottom, we do have a refilling port. This is a refillable lighter. You just need a can of butane and you can do this. Uh, we also have your flame adjustment. So you just turn this whole thing and you'll get a larger or a smaller flame depending on how you turn that. Now if I were to take my thumb and simply push the switch forwards, you'll notice that it's not actually lighting. It's not, the ignition source is not actually going off. The reason for that is because this has a built-in child safety feature to prevent any small child from picking up this thing and starting a fire. The way that you actually get the fire to work is you need to depress this black button on the back here. This button is just a simple spring-loaded button, doesn't really click when you push it in at all. So what you do is you push this down, you have to hold it down with your pointer finger, and when you're holding that button down, you can actually slide the switch forwards and light it all the way. Even with the button depressed, there is a fair amount of resistance before the thing actually fires. So it's really a child safety feature that is taking advantage of the fact that little children don't have the strongest of hands. So it might not be a perfect solution, but it is actually a really, really nice implementation. Some of them just have a really, really heavy trigger pull on them before it'll actually light. Others have like a small button on the side or something they have to press. Uh, but this one is on the back and for a small child, this is a fairly awkward uh, range of motion. You know, holding that button down and sliding the uh, switch forward. So there you go, especially considering the amount of force it takes to actually get the fire going. So let's go ahead and give you guys a proper demonstration. So here I have a candle. This is, of course, appropriately a Yankee candle, the Macintosh flavor, which happens to be my favorite scent. Now, obviously, if you have a standard Zippo lighter like this one, and you want to light your candle, you get the lid off, you will notice it is quite difficult indeed because you have to angle the out you have to angle the entire thing down you'll risk burning yourself like i just did i burnt myself with the flame and uh yeah overall it's not a very practical design for lighting a candle so this is really not very useful when it comes to wanting to start up a candle so we're going to set that off to the side this is why Zippo wanted to make the Zippo candle lighter because obviously this design provides quite the advantage that you can just go ahead and take it and light your candle as such, very, very simply. So yeah, obviously because of that, Zippo wanted to uh, produce for you all a candle lighter. So I think that's fairly obvious actually. And let's go and cap this, keep the smoke contained for a bit. And there you go. Uh, by the way, pro tip, when I do blow out a candle, here, let me show you. When you blow out a candle, obviously you're gonna get that smoke rising up. Uh, what I like to do is when I blow it out, obviously it's still streaming, I put the lid on top because what that does is that takes away the oxygen. There's like a little ember going on the wick if you ever looked at it. There's a little ember going and that ember 
is part of what's producing the smoke. So if you take away the oxygen, you're gonna minimize the amount of smoke created. When you remove it, you're gonna get a nice little puff of smoke coming out, but it certainly isn't gonna be as much smoke as you normally would get. Oh, the ember's still there. Wow, thanks, ember. <sighs> Stupid ember. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss the issue of refilling your lighter when it's been used up. Obviously, as you're continually using it, eventually you're going to run out of butane. And the nice thing about these Zippo candle lighters is that you don't have to throw it away and buy a new one. You can actually just refill it. In order to refill your lighter, the first thing you want to do is you want to purge the lighter. Now, in my case, I still have a fair amount of fluid left. I don't really recommend you doing this with a fair amount of fluid left in it, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna do it anyway, uh, mostly because, yeah, you know, I'm actually probably gonna take this outside because it just occurred to me, there is a pilot light in this very room. So uh, let's take this outside where it's safer. So once you notice that your flame is no longer lighting, there's actually still gonna be some residual fluid in there and you wanna get that out before you go to put new fluid in. So this is where you're going to purge the lighter. And the way that you're gonna go about doing this is you wanna take something uh, fairly slender and long like this paper clip here and bend it out. Okay, so you bend it out nicely like that. And what you're gonna do is if you look at the inside of the filling port, you will note there's a little tube in the middle. And what you wanna do is you wanna take this and you wanna push down on that tube, okay? And that will happen. I think we have gotten it all out, so let's just do a quick check. Yep. I don't even smell any, uh, shouldn't really do that, but <laughs> um, I just checked to see if we had any butane in there by smelling it, and I don't actually smell any butane coming out when I have this held up. I don't hear any pressure release, so this is totally empty now and it is now actually safe to fill it. Now when it comes time to fill your lighter, you're going to want to go for the butane and not the lighter fluid like what you get for your actual standard Zippo. You want to get the uh, butane fuel. Now this is Zippo brand. I recommend that you stick with the Zippo brand because obviously my thinking here is, is that if Zippo made the lighter, they probably know what's best for the actual, you know, guts of the lighter, I guess. I don't know. That's my philosophy. Plus, uh, you know, I think if you do use any other off-brand, somehow they'll be able to tell that and they'll actually void your warranty, which I don't fully understand or agree with. But let's go ahead and show you how this works. Now, this is actually a small can. This is also the original can that I bought. I don't really know how I haven't used it up yet, but there's a fair amount in here, actually. So what you want to do is take your lid off and you will notice that you've got this type of nozzle on there and what you is going to do is uh, you're going to take your candle lighter hold it upside down all right you're going to take this hold it upside down too you're going to stick this in the bottom and then you're going to push down for about maybe five or so seconds just push down and just count so ready one two three four five there you go. So a little puff of butane come out. So it would be a good idea to go ahead and do this outside or away from any fire or anything. So that way you don't accidentally burn the house down. Now, before you go ahead and give us a test light, I would wait about two or so minutes to let the butane in there warm up a bit. Because obviously the butane in here, when it goes in here, it actually cools down quite substantially. It's actually pretty, pretty cold. You can't really tell by holding it, but the butane in there is really quite cold. So you want to make sure that you give it some time to warm up, maybe stick it in your pocket to kind of help with that. Uh, but give it about two minutes before you go ahead and give it a test light. Okay, it's been about two minutes. Let's go ahead and give it our first test light and you can see it does in fact work. You'll also notice the flame is quite large. So if you want to uh, preserve some of your fuel while you can, just uh, go ahead and have it lit and turn the little knob on the back until you get a flame to, of the size to your liking. And uh, make sure obviously that it can still light after you do that. All right, again, you just turn this thing back here and it will make the flame larger or smaller for you, depending on what you want. You actually get it pretty small, but good luck lighting that. I recommend starting big, going to about there. That's probably pretty good. And there you go. So that is going to do it for the Zippo Candle Lighter. Yes, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below. I think I paid about $15 for this at 
uh, at Yankee Candle. And uh, yeah, it is actually pretty nice. So very, very nice indeed. The only thing I can really say about it is that I don't think this is actually fully metal. I think the actual sort of what looks to be anodized aluminum is actually plastic because if I do like the tooth test, it doesn't, really, I don't know, it, it, it kind of sounds like metal. But if I actually do the tooth test on like the uh, arm here, you can definitely tell that that's more of a definite metal sound. So I think the body of this is actually plastic, unfortunately. But other than that, really, really nice lighter. I mean, sometimes you have to try it a, f a couple times to get it to light. But um, yeah, I recommend it. So no need to go out and buy those disposables anymore when you can just buy a one-time use and I guess save the planet. <laughs> I don't know. So guys, that's going to do it. Thank you so, so very much for watching. And... Adios. A lot of you have probably noticed that the photos rolling throughout this video have looked a lot more professional than the photos that I normally am able to take. And the reason for that is because I've been given the opportunity to check out my friend's Canon Rebel XT. All right, as you can see right there, this is actually a fairly old camera. By today's standards, it's actually an eight-year-old camera from what I can tell on the internet. And uh, But despite its age, it's actually perfectly capable of uh, taking really, really nice pictures. Um, and yeah, I've been having quite a lot of fun with this. Now the lens on here, for those of you who are interested, is not the stock lens. There's uh, some specs for you if you want to read up on those. Uh, I don't really know how to say this exactly, but I believe I would say this is an EOS. Let's see, I believe I would say this is an EOS 18 to 135 millimeter lens. It does have a built-in image stabilizer. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really nice lens. There's some of your toggles you got your image stabilizer and your auto focus and manual focus right there so very very nice i am quite a big fan of this camera been having quite a lot of fun with it and um yeah it's it's been quite good here's uh here's some of the the back you do you will see we do have a very small screen this is actually a uh exclusively use the uh the viewfinder to to see what you're shooting you can't get the video feed on the screen i think again i think this is an earlier example of a dslr um, not really sure how long they've been producing these, but uh, yeah, it's really, really fun. And actually, this particular setup is perfect for me, because before it was lent off to me, uh, this has actually been used for product photography for a local brewery, a brewery that I think opened up earlier this year. And uh, they've been using this to take some pictures, some really nice pictures of some of the, the things that they create, some of the things that they produce, and... Um, it just so happens that I'm into product photography, and that is the photography that I am really interested in. So being able to have a lens that was actually that's actually kind of meant for that is really, really quite nice. Been able to really get in and do some really, really nice shots of things and whatnot. So that explains why the uh, the some of the photos in this in this video have been a lot more high end than what I normally am able to take. And yeah, definitely, definitely having a lot of fun with this. So everybody say cheese. Oh wow, that's a really good photo. Although, I have to say, no need to look exactly like me, guys. I mean, I know that y'all are all big fans of me, but my gosh, it's creepy. All of you look, ex why, why must you be dressed exactly like me? There, there's, <laughs> that's a little bit overkill, so just, just, you know, you can just be yourself. You don't all, have... anyway, um, that's going to do it, guys, um, for real now. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed these photos. I'm going to be... Uh, trying to shoot a lot more a few more videos before I have to give this thing back so that way you can see more of what I'm going to be able to produce for you guys in the near future with in terms of photography. Uh, I should mention though when I do get my own DSLR it will have the capability of recording 1080p video 60 frames a second preferably although it's not necessarily like a huge requirement it, I mean it's the main thing that I'm interested in with uh, a DSLR is actually being able to get into B-roll and once I can get a camera that can shoot 1080p uh, video I'll be able to do some nice and I mean some nice b-roll for you guys because uh, yeah <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to be able to start doing that it's really it's really gonna be kind of a I guess you could say a rite of passage 
for me on YouTube, I guess, if you will. I don't know. But uh, yeah, anyways, that's all for real, guys. Thank you for watching, and adios again.